Hello everyone, it's Erev Rosh Hashanah, Friday morning. I'm standing here in the main sanctuary in front of the white parochas of the Yom Narayim. The year 5780 is closing. The year 5781 will be beginning tonight. Before sharing with you a few brief thoughts, I just want to first thank the many people who have worked very hard to prepare and execute Rosh Hashanah at Young Israel this year. And God willing, we'll have a safe and successful and meaningful Rosh Hashanah. I first and foremost want to thank Carol, who has worked extremely hard and very long hours the last number of weeks, and we would not have been able to function uh, without her, as always. I want to thank the Gabayim for working very hard on the Davnis this year, the High Holiday Committee, who also put in many late hours planning and worrying about even the smallest detail. We have to thank the COVID Task Force for helping us, thank the board, Eli and Carrie, obviously, to thank uh, the Wertheimers and Sanders for allowing us to host Minyanim at their homes in their backyards. Uh, we have to thank uh, all of the Chazanim, people who will be laning, reading the Torah, or blowing the shofar, especially those who will be doing it for the first time this year and bravely volunteered for the benefit of the community. I apologize, there are probably many people, others that I'm forgetting to thank. There have been so many people, and we thank all of you for coming together, for working on this together, and that is a great merit of how to begin this coming year. This past year has been a very difficult year, a tragic year for the entire world. It's been a painful year for the United States. Many people in our community, based on their life situation, have had a difficult year. It's been a challenging year for our community. But uh, this should be, our work to prepare for Hashanah should be one of the merits to usher in a better year this coming year. When thinking about, for myself personally, what should I be thinking about on this Rosh Hashanah? This Rosh Hashanah is going to be different. We all know that, whether you'll be in a tent or outside in the sukkah or davening at home. This Rosh Hashanah will be like, not be like any other Rosh Hashanah we have ever experienced. And what are we supposed to be thinking about? What are we supposed to be davening for? And to be honest with you, I'm a bit overwhelmed and confused myself. We live in a confusing time. I'd like to share with you five or six just brief thoughts of some of the things that are on my mind that I have been thinking about, that I will be thinking about in Rosh Hashanah. And uh, hopefully they will add to your tefillos and be a value for you. The last pasuk in the book of Tehillim is called Hanishma Tahalal Yahalia, let every soul praise the Lord. The Medrash comments, so do not read it as Kol Nishima, every soul, but Kol Nishima Nishima, with every breath we must thank the Lord. Every breath that we take is a gift from Hashem and cannot be taken for granted. Those were words, but we now feel them, we should feel them. And realize how true that is after this year more so than ever. This year it was the breath of life that was attacked, that was taken from thousands, ten thousands, hundreds of thousands. The shofar is the, the breath of life that a person blows back to God. This year, we should take a moment to realize and recognize if we are alive, if we are standing here, then we have what to thank Hashem, that we survived this year. If all of our loved ones and family members did so, all the more so. And this year when we read the passages in the Davnin, Zachreinu Lachaim, Hashem remember us for life, us, me, my family, my friends, my community, the Chasveinu B'Sefer Chaim, write us in the book of life. Those words should be more meaningful this year than years past. The second thought is that this year we have been humbled. We have realized that we are not quite as big, not quite as powerful, not quite as autonomous as we thought we were. We cannot stand in the face of a global pandemic. We cannot hold that back. Our livelihoods are dependent on economic forces that are larger than us, no matter how talented or smart that we are. There are social forces that can overwhelm us. 
And we come on this Rosh Hashanah feeling a little bit smaller, a little bit more bent over, maybe a little bit weaker. But that is not necessarily a bad thing when standing before Hashem. But on Rosh Hashanah, we fill that void, if there's a certain void in us, not with fear or anxiety or depression, but we can fill that same void, that same space. If we have shrunk and there's this empty space, we can fill that with faith in Hashem, with trust in Hashem, with our belief in God. It is possible to coronate Hashem as king, to feel that you are merely a servant, that you are dependent, that you are in need, that we need you, Hashem. We can feel that more strongly than in years past, which means we can make Hashem king in a way that is uh, more deep, more powerful than in years past. The third thought is that over this past year, what has been very difficult and frightful for many is how chaotic and unpredictable it was certainly at specific times. You would try to plan for your own lives. We were planning for the shul. No one knew, well, what will be in a few weeks, in a few months? Will there be chas v'shalom, a second wave or not? Will school meet or not? Will there be work or not? Will our families be able to come together or not? The whole world turned upside down. Things that we thought were impossible could never change. Suddenly, overnight, deceased. I remember in the very beginning, there was talk. School might have to close for a week or two. And I thought, that's crazy. That's ridiculous. How could that? Uh, what are people going to do? How would people work? And then school closed, not for a week or two, for the entire year. On Rosh Hashanah, though, we focus on those things that do not change. We have realized this year that almost everything can change, but there are some things that are eternal. There are some things that do not change. And such a chaotic, unpredictable, wildly changing world on Rosh Hashanah, we focus on the principles that are eternal, that Hashem is king, that there is right and wrong, that our actions matter, that they are remembered, that there's purpose and meaning in life. So in Rosh Hashanah, we should take this time to remember all the chaos around us. We close our eyes and we think, but what truly is important? What is unchanging? What will, what will not cease? Our love for our family, our belief in Hashem, those are the things that we can find permanence in which we can find eternity. The fourth thought is that even though Rosh Hashanah focuses on those things that are eternal and are unchanging, that you can always rely on. We've also learned this year how humanity has such an incredible uh, capacity to adapt. Overnight, the world changed and we adapted. The scientific and medical community on a dime changed how incredible resources were, were being used. Suddenly, everyone was focused on the coronavirus. There were incredible innovations, incredible discoveries. We learned so much, the entire world, so quickly. How people work, how people go to school, how people socialize, even how we dive and how we learn. We adapted, we found new ways, successful ways. We learned this year that it is possible to grow, to learn, to change, to adapt. And that too is a lesson of Rosh Hashanah. The lesson of Rosh Hashanah is that things are not set. It is not true that things cannot change. Every year there is a new Rosh Hashanah, there is a new year, there is a new cycle. There can be a new beginning. And so we should take the lesson additionally this year that we can change, we can grow, we can find new ways to do things, to do things better, even if it is a challenge that forces us. And so in this Rosh Hashanah, we think not just in terms of practical matters in life, not just in terms of health and safety, but as a human being, as a Jew, spiritually, emotionally, how do I want to change? How do I want to adapt? The fifth lesson, the fifth idea, is that we have learned this year that we are in this together. 
cannot think about just ourselves, and this year we will not be davening just for ourselves. It is a global pandemic. We are davening for them to find uh, a therapy um, uh, for the entire world. We cannot think just about ourselves. And the truth is on Rosh Hashanah, we daven for the entire world. We daven for a vaccine for the entire world. But on a regular year even, on Rosh Hashanah, we daven in Maloch al-Kol Kulo B'chlodecha. Hashem, reveal yourself to the entire world. L'takein olam b'malchut shakai to, to uh, fix, to improve, to uplift the entire world. We normally don't think in those terms. We don't think of, I want to daven for the entire world. But this year, we need to daven for the entire world. We learned this year that we each affect one another. I affect you and you affect me. Whether it's social distancing protocols, if others are not keeping the rules, it does affect me. And if I don't keep the rules, it affects others. We cannot survive alone. Unfortunately, the coronavirus in different ways on all levels of society have been tearing people apart, have making people more distanced physically and also emotionally and socially. And so this year we will be davening not just for ourselves, we will be davening for our entire community, for the United States, for the entire world. And we should be davening to rise above any divisions, to find ways to make space for one another, to work together, to come together, to respect one another, to realize that we are in this together, we need one another, and we'll be better off if we are together. And finally, the last thought is that no matter what the challenge is, no matter the difficulties, it is possible to find joy and to find happiness. Certainly moments, if you look for them and you hold on to them. This year, we will say when we dip the apple in the honey, that everyone should have a shana tova metuka, everyone should have a new and sweet year. There still can be sweetness. We still can be happy. We still can find joy. And certainly one of the prime ways to do that is through the mitzvos, is on the holidays, is in the community of our shul. And so on that, I want to wish everyone a ksiva v'chasima tova. We should all be signed and sealed in the book of life for a healthy and happy new year.